Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, a journalist is on a mission to expose what he believes to be deceptive elements surrounding the gender ideology movement. Brandon Showalter, a reporter with the Christian Post, has recently released season three of his hit podcast, Generation Indoctrination. It's all about this issue of transgender ideology and what is happening throughout America. He believes the country is experiencing a potential turning point, and he's here to talk with us about what is happening legislatively, among families, and with those who have decided to de-transition. Lots to unpack here on the show today. With no further ado, let's welcome Brandon Showalter. Brandon Showalter, so appreciate you coming on today. We have a lot to talk about. You have a new season of your podcast, Generation Indoctrination, and we will get into that. But I want to start with this issue of gender and what is happening in culture right now. So many issues the public have moved more into a secular arena on, and yet on gender, it's really a situation where the public, when you look at the polls, they're not supportive of transitioning children. The public does not want to see a lot of these things being taught in schools. Why do you think this one issue is so unique in that the public is not really moving alongside with the more progressive side of things? What I believe, Billy, is that I think that this issue does tap into something very primal. And I would I would just say that the other aspect of that is that it when you see children being hurt, that really gets people's attention. And we live in an age when doctors will go to work tomorrow and cut the breasts off of 13-year-old girls. I'm not making that up. We're watching children become sterilized. And when you're not able to procreate and have a family, that's a very primal and human thing. And so I think even people who are very secular, they're not religious people, it taps into something deeply human. And when people realize what's at stake, that children are being harmed in this way, and that they are having their options, you know, foreclosed because of an experimental uh, medical treatment protocol uh, that has no basis in science, and there's no long-term studies to confirm that gender confusion in children uh, should be treated with, you know, blockers, hormones, and surgery. I think just the extreme nature of it and the fact that it erases people's options, it it taps into something primal and very human. And even secular people um, don't want to see that happen. Uh, Possibly another option, um, another dimension rather to this is that even in this country where we do have you know, Christian, Judeo-Christian norms and ethics that has shaped the public mind in a way where even if people don't personally believe in God, that still does affect their thinking. And so perhaps some of the residual effects of that are still causing people to think that this gender transitioning, uh, I don't even like that phrase, but that this is just a bridge too far. Um, And I think that's, uh, that's a moment of grace. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you have, I mean, you have a couple of factors here too, right? You have the gender issue more broadly um, and people will debate that what's being taught in schools, what's being talked about, but then you have children. And as you were mentioning, children who go through surgeries that are irreversible and we've heard, and I know you have more than anybody heard some horrific stories of what has happened to people, especially those who detransition, you know, and recognize that this was not something that they should have gone through, but they've already gone through these surgeries and made life altering, you know, decisions about their bodies. When you're talking about kids, it seems to break through in a different way. And this is becoming a major problem, I think, obviously, for for even politically for different sides who take different positions on this. But I want to I want to move into the, the podcast generation indoctrination. You decided to do a new season, a third season of this show. And this is a show just so people know, as you're listening to it, you're so drawn into the stories and at the same time horrified by what you're hearing because it's heartbreaking. But what made you want to do another another season of this show? There were several reasons that we felt like we had to do another season of our documentary style podcast series, Generation Indoctrination. 
Uh, and one of the main ones was that the, I think the tide really did turn in some significant ways in 2023. Mostly, we saw 17 states move against this. Uh, I think the most egregious harm, like you were just saying, is to children who are being put on these experimental drugs and are undergoing these irreversible surgeries. And so to see that kind of uh, large scale push that is now shaping national discourse, that was just worthy of further journalistic you know, analysis. And so we felt as though we owed it to our listeners to, to show the progress of what has been happening. Whatever you think of the red state, it's, and this is happening in red states, let's be honest. Whatever you think of the legislation, it's an important development because these states have now forced the issue. But that's not the only reason. Uh, the other thing is that there are families and, and children and young people who have had their lives completely destroyed by this. And that's not me by being hyperbolic. In episode three, we feature the, fa- the parents who have been shattered by this. And I don't think that the parents have gotten enough of the voice of a voice uh, in this landscape. A lot of the detransitioners who underwent these drugs and surgeries made a lot of noise appearing at these state legislatures where they passed these, these bans on transing children hormonally and surgically. But I don't think we've heard enough from the families. And so in episode three of season three of this series, uh, we speak to several parents who have had their lives completely upended. Um, one of them in particular is a man by the name of Bill Mahoney, who's featured in the documentary Dead Name, in which I was honored to appear. And people can still, still go see that at deadnamedocumentary.com. But we, we talk about in the episode how clinicians in his case were willing to put his 19-year-old cancer-stricken son on cross-sex hormones. We don't have conclusive proof of that, but the evidence is very compelling. We also interview another mother who had to endure the torturous horror of being in the next room while doctors surgically maimed her forearm to create some crude manifestation of a penis. I mean, these are medical atrocities that are worthy of, as I've often said, Nuremberg style tribunals. And these parents have been screaming into the void for years and very few people have been willing to give them a voice to let their concerns be heard. And so we were happy to capture those stories at the Christian Post. We also do feel as the Christian Post, we wanna explain why it's such a big deal to us as Christians. And so we did the final episode on how we should engage this subject theologically and ethically. And so we, we took a more, a theological angle on the final episode. Um, but there were just so many more stories that needed to be told in addition to the immense pushback that we are now seeing against gender ideology. Yes, in the medical arena, but also in schools, in prisons, in sports, and every other realm of culture where gender ideology has invaded. And let me tell you, Billy, it invades every single area of, of cultural space. There's not a single place where you won't see the incursion of this insanity uh, in the Western world today. What has affected you most, especially in this season of the podcast, hearing, I mean, we, you also, in addition to hearing from families, you heard from you know, detransitioners. There's, there's one story in particular that's very heartbreaking. What is it like for you as a trained journalist to go through listening to these stories that are incredibly, incredibly difficult to listen to? I think what is the most difficult uh, thing to realize is that you realize that, you know, for me, it's it's just I've had such a hard time coming to grips with the fact that this is actually real, and I'm not sure that I would even believe these stories unless it was unless it was I, <laughs> unless I was the one actually hearing them on the front lines, and I, I cannot believe uh, some of what I'm hearing, but I'm seeing original documents. I have source material. I've seen photos that I've had to get counseling for of these medical atrocities, these these brutalized bodies. And it's hard not to just want to scream sometimes because what you're seeing is so unbelievably horrible. And you don't think that in a country like the United States that something like this could happen, but it's happening. I mean, I said earlier, I'm not, it is not an exaggeration to say that 13-year-old girls have had their breasts cut off. Healthy breasts, healthy tissue has been amputated. I've seen medical journals where 15 and 16-year-old boys have had their genitals amputated, and they're using stomach lining or intestinal tissue to make a, a fake vagina out of it. This is an absolute nightmarish monstrosity, and 
when you're on the front lines of seeing that and having the responsibility to document that both in print and on our podcast, it's just a harrowing thing. And there's no easy way to express it. I, I, I tell the story often where I've had the frustration of going home to the countryside of Virginia, where I'm from, and I start to talk about some of what I'm reporting on, and they look at me as though I have five or six heads. That was years ago. Now they realize that I'm actually telling the truth and that this re- these horrors, these atrocities are really, really real. And it's, it's, it's as though they can't believe it because it's so grisly and unpleasant to hear and deal with. But the hard thing is seeing the, ch- the hardest thing is by far is hearing about the children and the young people being hurt. And perhaps even more than that, hearing the palpable, excruciating anguish of the parents and the families who feel as though their lives have been destroyed and shattered. Um, and that's not, and again, I'm, just, I'm not being hyperbolic here. This has ruined everything that it touches. It's one of the worst medical scandals in human history. I think especially, and it's especially bad because this has been marketed to our youth in terms of identity. I don't think we've ever seen a scourge like this be presented to young people as though their identity hangs upon ex- undergoing experimental drugs and having their healthy body parts cut off. They actually believe, they've been ideologically indoctrinated to believe that unless they undergo these brutal medical practices, that they're somehow not living their truest, most authentic selves. I mean, the ideological brainwashing that has happened concurrently with this, with these brutalities is just astonishing in its degree and scope. And that's just a hard thing to have to be sober-minded and document uh, journalistically. But we have to. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's and that's the thing. And, and, you know, my final my final question for you on this, you know, obviously the shock and the horror of all of it is part of of this season of the show. And yet at the same time, you have this hope and you do such a great job of balancing these elements in the show and the, and the hope you would deal with this really in episode one is that maybe the tides are turning. Maybe there is a shift. We talked about this at the start of the interview that people aren't necessarily coming alongside um, th- this issue. What would you say, just as we round out to a close here, that you think is going to happen next, which I know is tough to predict on this issue in this country? The only hope that I have, Billy, is in Jesus Christ the Lord. At the end of the day, that's where it lands for me. I very much believe that somehow God in his infinite goodness is going to bring deliverance. There are parents across this nation crying out for mercy. They are crying out for justice. And I believe very deeply that God hears from heaven. He hears from heaven. And the Lord has heard their cries. He's collected all of their tears. And I believe that he's going to act in a very sovereign way. A couple years ago, I was praying with a group of intercessors. And I just had this sense uh, from the Holy Spirit that the wicked who are doing these atrocities will soon be dethroned. And so that's the hope that animates me and keeps me going. I, of course, will continue to pray for all those who are trying to do their best to protect children and prevent this ideology from taking further hold. But I believe that if the Church of Jesus Christ prays uh, it and they are committed to this in intercessory prayer and they just go after this, it will soon be dismantled in the realm of the Spirit. As I often like to say, uh, I'm animated by that verse in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the tearing down of and destruction of strongholds. And gender ideology is a stronghold, but it's no match for the Lion of Judah. And so I'm encouraged by that. And I believe if God's people pray, we will see this diabolical wickedness destroyed. And so that's what I stand on. And we at the Christian Post are going to be a bulwark against this, and we don't plan on budging a single inch. Well, Brandon Show Walter, I appreciate you taking us through all of it. The the show is Generation Indoctrination. You can listen to it right now over at the Christian Post. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Billy. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.